Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to DIY a USB wide keyboard into a wireless keyboard that supports quick switching between multiple devices. The modification process requires a DIY module purchase from the personal developer website of Scan. The model number is WBTV3. The wireless receiver that comes with the module and the lithium battery with a capacity of over 2000 mAh. I'm using an ultra thin polymer soft pack lithium battery. This battery can be perfectly installed inside the keyboard. If your keyboard has enough internal space, I suggest you choose a battery with a larger capacity. This will give you longer battery life. Let me show you the wiring definitions for the WBTV3. This will help you understand how to connect the module properly. The parent switch has four wires, the positive pole, the negative pole, and the positive and negative poles for the light indicator light. Pay close attention to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. It's crucial not to reverse the polarity of the battery. Incorrect connections can burn out the PCB. This is the charging interface for the PCB using a Type-C socket. It also serves as the data cable entry point when setting up functions. This is the USB socket for connecting the keyboard using a standard USB 2.0 socket. USB 2.0 has four wires, which are the power supply positive, labeled as VCC, the power supply negative, labeled as DND, the data positive, labeled as D+, and the data negative, labeled as D. The red and black wires are the switch wires for the PCB. Touch the black and red wires together to activate the module's power. If the numlock indicator light can be turned on and off normally, it means the keyboard has started working. This confirms that the keyboard and the module are compatible. Now, let's officially begin the DIY process. The disassembly method for each keyboard is different. My keyboard is easy to disassemble. There are no screws, just clips, and it comes apart easily. You can use Google to search for how to disassemble your keyboard model. With the outer shell removed, plug the keyboard cable into the keyboard interface on the module. Take out the multimeter. Set it to the diode continuity test position. When there is a connection, the multimeter will emit a beeping sound. Touch the black probe to the VCC terminal on the PCB for the keyboard wiring. Then, with the red probe, measure the terminals on the keyboard to locate where the VCC wire is positioned on the keyboard. Next, identify the positions of G and D, D plus and D respectively. If your keyboard has 5 or 6 wires, the extra wire is a shield wire, which you can ignore. If your keyboard has a Type-C interface, you can connect the Type-C to USB adapter to the USB socket, then proceed with the measurement. Similarly, you only need to look at VCC, GND, D+, and D wires. Ignore any extra wires. Now, connect the keyboard wires from the module to the correct positions on the keyboard. Please ensure that the connections are correct. Now, all we need to do is connect the module to the battery and secure them inside the keyboard. Since there wasn't enough space inside my keyboard, I used a utility knife to cut away a portion. It turns out that a sharp utility knife is very effective for cutting plastic. After removing the original keyboard cable, I found that the remaining hole was perfectly suitable for securing the charging port of the PCB. The PCB comes with a built-in charging module. You just need to extend the interface. When the module was purchased, it came with two types of power switches. One is a micro switch with an indicator light, which is relatively large and requires drilling a hole for installation. The other is an ultra-thin surface mount switch that 
can be let out through the gaps in the keyboard casing, but it does not have a stylus light. I chose the ultra thin surface mount switch, so there's no need for a stylus light. It's necessary to insulate the wiring for the stylus light. Now, secure the lithium battery with hot glue. Be cautious not to use too much hot glue, as lithium batteries are sensitive to high temperatures. Initially, I mounted the surface mount switch through the gap in the casing, but I found it unattractive. So, I changed its position and placed it next to the Type-C charging port for a neater appearance. Insert the receiver. Let us test it. 